gathered here this morning, and a especially warm welcome to anyone who is visiting. Praise the Lord. Now, we are in Advent, the second Sunday of Advent. So, the first thing we do is we light the Advent candle, the second one, and we say a bidding prayer before we enter into our service proper. Once the world was so dark that God could hardly see, then God sent Jesus. Now because God sent Jesus, everyone may see God. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. That's Isaiah 9, verse 2. I will now light the two candles for Apple. We start with our prayer of preparation, which we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our appointed psalm is Psalm 85. I will read the first verse, and you will read the second, alternatively, in Psalm 85. The Lord showed favor to your land. You restored the fortune of Jacob. You the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again for our Savior and put away all this pleasure to God. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together, righteousness meets each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. 
please stand. We have our first song, All People That on Earth Do Dwell.
mighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for our next song. Great is thy faithfulness. 147 in the books.
Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, the day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to be holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and see its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt from the heat. But in keeping his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience in salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. This is the word of the Lord.
zijn heel veel gasten. As is customary before we start a message from God, let us bow our heads and pray. As the song is of old, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, O God, and O Redeemer. Amen. Say again, good morning, everyone. And uh, oh, 
gospel today refers to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist leads us in this Advent season to the one who is our Lord, whose birth we await and whose reign will be for eternity without end. The gospel is good news. It is good news about the Son of God, or Savior Jesus Christ. This is not only the beginning of the good news, however, but in Jesus' death and resurrection, we have the fulfillment of all that was prophesied about him. John, therefore, came to prepare the way before Jesus so that the people would be primed to accept the message that Jesus is the Son of God, the promised Messiah. This was all announced beforehand by the prophets on inspiration of God and the job of God alone out of all who are made uh, is able to prophesy the future and bring it to pass. So we are looking forward to Christmas, the birth when we commemorate the birth of Jesus. But if we follow our gospel today, we understand what John was about. Under the old um, dispensation and covenant, John comes along exactly on schedule to prepare the way for Jesus. John fulfills his destiny as the greatest of the Old Testament men of God. He said he was the last prophet. This is roughly three years before Jesus gives up his life to usher in the new covenant, everything exactly to God's plan. John reminded Israel that all had sinned and needed those sins removed in order to come back to God. And as a reference, he gave them the symbolism of wasting, washing those sins away in baptism. Thus, his message was, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Now, I trust we all have thought it through and realized that this call to repentance is not enough of itself to take away our sins. It is accepting the sacrifice of Jesus and his blood in exchange for us that really removes our sins. But this is preparing the way. We all have to recognize that we are born under Adam, the Adamic sin. So we all are sinners. But if we accept the ransom sacrifice of Jesus and be baptized in his name, then we are forgiven and John's preparation will not be in vain. It was not just for, the, it was for those back there, but Jesus himself was baptized. So he set the example, though he was without sin, he set the example for us and we can be forgiven and receive everlasting life. Repentance means turning around, changing our mind, and full circle regarding the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, or triune God. One God, three in one. Changing our mind regarding the path we were walking before conversion, and maybe are still walking. But changing our mind regarding being a disciple of Jesus 
and not just appearing in church meetings. This is not enough in itself. It, we have to do the inner work. Our hearts and our minds have to be changed. The Bible passage shows how John himself sacrificed to prepare the way for Jesus. It talks about his clothing, his food, and his integrity. He did not try to get praise for himself. His focus was on bring, um, bringing up the name of Jesus and welcoming anyone who wanted to avail themselves of that privilege. Jesus would say later on in Matthew 6 that if it's all about you're looking good before others, that's no good. You have to get the reward by believing in Christ and trusting him to deliver you. So, like John the Baptist, we must have integrity and we must also walk in humility. Two very important words. John did his part by leading the people to repent and to be baptized for the remission of their sins. Because until Jesus' death and resurrection, they could only be put in a queue to be told the full story. But we today have the full story, so we have no excuse to receive righteousness from God, imputed to us. He took our sins on himself and in exchange it was a righteous standing before God. So we see John's declaration was all about Jesus. John went into the wilderness, a place where water is scarce and slippery creatures plentiful. The wilderness had special meaning for Israel. Israel became a nation in the wilderness. It was in the wilderness that they learned to obey God. They had to relearn that lesson over and over again because they were so inclined not to obey God. But God used the wilderness to shape Israel and to save them. In like manner, he works with us today. There was no pulpit. There were no pews. No people either. John went there to preach. A crazy idea, really. But somehow, people learned that there was a prophet in the wilderness. And so they went in droves to him. When they got there, they heard John preach a very simple sermon. The Gospel of Mark tells us that John preached the baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. Let me repeat that. John preached the baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. And so John's sermon had three points. The first point was repentance. When we say the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, repentance is the second of three, but it's really number one. You have to be repentant and led into the baptismal waters. So repentance is where they had to start and we have to start. Most people think that repentance is feeling guilty, but it's much more than that. The New Testament was written originally in Greek, and the Greek word is mentanoa, pronounced metanoa. It involved changing one's mind, changing one's heart, and that's where real change begins, 
isn't it? It has to start inside. And then change your mind, change your heart, we decide then to quit believing lies and start believing the truth. We will begin to move in a new direction. As I said earlier, about to I move in a new direction. That's where the guilt comes in. But it's a byproduct of repentance and not the main thing. Changing our minds, changing the direction of our lives, that what, that's what repentance is all about. Once we quit living by lies and start living by the truth, we are likely to say, what was I thinking? Why was I messing up my life and everyone else's? Why was I doing things that hurt other people? That's the point that we start to feel guilty. But then our new understanding makes it clear how much heartache we caused and we want to do something about it. We want to avail ourselves for God's, Jesus' forgiveness. Now we come to the second point, baptism. Once we change their minds and begin to follow truth, John said, now you need to be baptized. Their baptism acknowledged that they had become new people, godly people. Today we get baptized and it's a sacrament, we call it a sacrament, and it is performed in front of our brothers and sisters or witnesses. That is to show that it's an outward sign of an inward grace. We have changed our minds, we have changed our heart condition, and now we present ourselves to be baptized. A lot of people like to think of it as a washing away, because there's water involved, the washing away of our sins, but it is really to show that we have actually accepted Christ. In the book of Romans, Paul spells out the meaning of Christian baptism. He says that when we were baptized, we were buried with Jesus into his death, so that just like Christ, we are raised from the dead through the glory of the Father. That's a nice way to put it. So we might also walk in newness of life. It makes us into new people, the people of God the bride of Christ, the church. But individually, we make that decision. Then we come to the third point, forgiveness of sins. Once we get our heads screwed in the right direction and start living a new life with Christ, we are likely to worry that our report card has been indelibly stained but no, our repentance and baptism usher in the forgiveness of our sins and God wipes our slate clean. He gives us a fresh new start. Some people talk about the baptism of children, but isn't that, I remember Reverend Cornelia speaking about that and saying that's that is still good because the baby is fresh. <laughs> so it's a new start anyway. And the older ones who come to be baptized, it is indeed a fresh start for them. We need that, don't we? In fact, I think every day I need a fresh start. Don't know about you. We need a fresh start, not just once, but almost every day. Because most of us, with some regularity, do or say something that we shouldn't. So we need God's forgiveness day after day. This is not um, to salvation, because once you believe in Christ and accept His ransom sacrifice, 
You are forgiven past, present, and future sins. But for day to day misdemeanors or wrongdoings, we need to ask for forgiveness. But the God who forgave us yesterday will forgive us today and will forgive us tomorrow. And we also help us to walk the straight and narrow path that leads to life. That is stated for us in Matthew 7, verse 14. So, John concluded his sermon with these words. He said, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strings of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and loosen. I baptize you in water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Listen to that once more. John said that Jesus will baptize us in the Holy Spirit. And later at Pentecost, Peter preached, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's in Acts 2 verse 38. The Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. Peter was saying that when we repent and are baptized, we receive two gifts. The first is the forgiveness of our sins, and the second is the gift of the Holy Spirit. God's Spirit living in us, guiding us, empowering us, and helping us. Mark then concludes with the story of Jesus' baptism. Mark was the first gospel to be written, and it's the shortest. A bare bones account of Jesus' life. Mark's account of Jesus' baptism was that, was just like that. Very brief. You know some people are very brief, but they're to the point. This is what it is. He just says that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Then he says, immediately coming up from the water, Jesus saw the heavens open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came out of the sky. He said, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So when we get baptized, we hear the same cry. God is pleased when we change our lifestyle and walk in accordance with his desires. The question then is, what has this got to do with us really? We answer by starting at the end, the part when the voice from heaven says, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. This is God the Father. It is this beloved Son in whom we believe. It is this beloved Son whom we follow and who made it possible for us to become new people, members of the household of faith, members of the family of God. So, to recap, I always like some, everybody to leave with something. It's not just talking or even reading the message of the Bible. <clears throat> repentance. Let's practice repentance every day. Satan is out there and we can be sure that he will try every day to get us to move in the wrong direction. So every day we are likely to have reason to repent and to ask Jesus to help us once again to move in the right direction. That's not hard to do. He gives us breath of life to wake every morning and 
and we should ask him forgiveness for our sins. Where there's life, there is hope. The second point to take away is baptism. Let's celebrate our baptism every day. And I don't mean washing your skin. Let's remember that our baptism made us new people, people of God. Let's remember to act like God's people, to love, very important, and to forgive, also very important, as God loves and forgives us. So if somebody wrongs us or slights us, we don't hold it. Well, I'm not going to forgive her. She should not have done that. No, we forgive. Because when we forgive, God then forgives us. But He forgives us first, so we just do likewise. And then, forgiveness. Forgiveness might be the hardest and the difficult thing to do. But do you believe that God has actually forgiven you? It's a rhetorical question. Most of us have a loss of little sins, but many of us have done some pretty terrible things at some point in our lives. The hard thing is to believe that God has forgiven us for the terrible things. Let me assure you that he has. You can be free, free in Christ, because we must then keep on that straight and narrow road. You may at one time have um, done several things, but at your baptism, God cleaned you up and He put a new robe on your shoulders, new shoes on your feet, and a ring on your finger. He brought you back into his home and made it your home. He welcomed you back into his family. He wiped your slate clean, never to be mentioned again. So repent, be baptized, and receive God's forgiveness. That's the formula for a new life. Believe it, live it.
standing and clear our faith together in creed. <clears throat> we believe in God the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now have a intercession of prayer by David. Pray for everyone in any 
any way on the world at this time, especially now that it's known to us that, that we all may know your healing and wholeness. Pray about the waiting come situation in regard to NHS waiting lists and ask for it to aim for the reduction. We pray and now have a moment of silence to remember anyone known personally to us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. We will now come to peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from the high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. We now have our offerings. Um, of course, you can use a plate at the back if you want an offering with you, or alternatively, some of you pay through the bank. That's acceptable. And we have our machine if you can. And the church wardens will bring it up for us. Please.
fill you up with glory. And so, Father, according to my his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking to his coming in glory, we celebrate the memorial of all redemption. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we offer you this all sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. We ask to show our daily bread, and give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
and in love and service to our local community through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you love the world so much that you gave your life for the salvation of this world. We pray for every man, woman, and child in every corner of our world, that they may hear the gospel message and be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray for every country on the planet, for every tribe, every language, and every culture to hear the message of your love for them. Raise up pastors and evangelists to bring the gospel to the far reaches of the world. Open their eyes to see Jesus. Give them ears to hear and soften their hearts to turn in repentance and faith to the Holy One who has the power to change their lives our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And we could not forget the prayer for peace in the Holy Land. Almighty God, hear the cry of our hearts as we hold before you the people of the Holy Land. Be there to those who have lost lives and loved ones, and be a sure rock to those who are in terrible state. We pray that through your spirit of wisdom and mercy, conflict may cease, and that the leaders of the nations may work together for peace and justice between Israel and Palestine. As you wept over Jerusalem, so we ask that you hear the prayers of those who weep this day for your holy land. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we must not forget those in a prayer focus or a prayer list. Some are here today, but we ask Lord that you will pour your blessings on them and Restore them to perfect health and joy. We pray for Dory. We pray for Jean and Walter, Monica, Dion and Yvonne, and the family as they mourn the passing of Dorothy. We pray for Sue and her mom Daisy, and the family as they mourn the loss of their brother, her brother Andrew. We pray for Veronica and Chester, Dolly and Desmond, Jean Murphy, who's here with us today, Joanna, Pat and Ray Vincent, Pauline Haywood, and her family, as the more the passing of Daphne, Muriel, David, Surya Kello, Veronica, Monica, Cheryl, Charity, Pippa, Duke, Radcliffe, and Corby. We pray for our chief Ellen and his family. We pray for Mr. Gray, who is in hospital, Andy and Anita, Yuna, who is here today, Noel, Jackie, Maxine, and Maxine Garrison. Hoping that they will get suitable accommodation. May Dorothy, Sister Dorothy, rest in peace. And we must not forget our beloved vicar, Reverend Cornelius, and his lovely family as they mourn the loss of his mom. We commend all these into your care, Father, and may they, once he sees, rest in peace,
and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, purify all hearts and minds that when your Son, Jesus Christ, comes again as Judge and Savior, we may be ready to receive him, who is our Lord and our God. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world, and will send him again to be our Judge, give us grace so to imitate him, in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the prayer of thanks. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So we want 
to congratulate our dear sister Ellen. <laughs>
And I must not forget Westfield Carol singing. That's on Saturday, my birthday. So as many of you who can come, we start at 6 o'clock and we can go way on till 8 o'clock. Now, we have listed a group called Shine Your Light and also representatives from Transform Europe to join us at Inspire Faith Space, which is on the second floor at Westfield. Anybody can drop in to rest or pray or be a volunteer. So we are bringing in the Christmas with Carol singing on Saturday. So many of you came last year and it was wonderful and it prefers to be even better this year. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of you. Yes? On the I beg your pardon? The first one, the ground floor actually. Yes. They haven't moved the piano, so it's where the piano is. Just look for the piano and maybe a Christmas tree also. So. Okay. Anything I've forgotten? No. Jeff Wardens?